G'day guys and welcome to Ziggy Trades, the show where I run you guys through the things that I've bought and sold and invested in and for how much and why, basically giving you guys some insights into trading because I know a lot of people struggle with just what do you ex exactly actually invest in, what do you purchase early in a league and what sort of things are actually selling. So I thought I would actually record the significant and interesting sales that I made and run you guys through them to give you some information on them. Hopefully this will be a very interesting and enlightening uh, series for you guys. So day two of Breach, this is the uh, uh, end of day two of Breach essentially. Uh, very good day, very productive day in terms of trading and in terms of character progression. I've got myself to 82. Uh, this is significant for the trading process, getting yourself to end game as early as possible and farming end game content and getting the loot that people want to buy off you so that they can get into end game is a big part of making a lot of profits early in a league for sure. I have uh, produced a fair amount of currency. I went from about, I was sitting about 10 chaos ish total currency uh, at the start of day two and at the end of day two uh, I'm sitting at about one exalt and 82 chaos uh, plus quite a bit of extra growth in like the other mixed currency areas and then on top of that I had reinvested some of that into my character uh, I, I bought you know various pieces of gear some pretty nice gear to upgrade my character uh, some of this was through the process of buying things and then buying upgrades and then reselling the things that I didn't buy for a prof that I didn't end up keeping or using for a profit so uh, uh, pretty good stuff overall. So my character is reasonably geared now. I'm probably going to do some more uh, improvements today with some more significant items now that I have some wealth behind me. So let's go through, uh, firstly, something that didn't work out. Let's start with a failure. So one of my original early league plans was to uh, craft a lot of jewels and sell those, you know, for people making blade flurry builds and flame blast builds and stuff like that. Get some jewels for myself in the process. However, something that I learned is that in uh, softcore exchange rates and early in the league, uh, regals are very difficult to obtain. Regals are super rare. They very rarely drop. I've seen three regals in the amount of time that I've played so far, um, which is one day in four hours. So they are pretty rare. And then before people get to farming item level 75 loot in high level, you know, mid to high level maps, uh, no, nobody's doing the regal recipe, so there's just no regals around. So it's actually two chaos for a regal at the moment, which is just, that's just too much. Like the chance of getting a, the stat that's going to resell for enough to make a big profit on that is just not high enough. So I ended up with like a lot of, a lot of two stat jewels here that I would, would maybe regal if regals were cheaper, but just not quite like nothing nothing really quite good enough so uh that was a bit of failure i dumped a bunch of ults into jewels that essentially aren't selling now until i can regal them so that's tied up currency that's not really doing anything for me at the moment so not particularly useful so that was kind of a failed plan a, le a learn learning experience a life lesson learn all right so let's go through some of my trades here for you guys first up this was just a leveling item that i thought was kind of interesting sold this belt here with no life strength uh, and uh, two resists early on for one chaos, aka one vile here. Uh, and, uh, you know, this has craftable life on it. Maybe I could have sold that for 2C if I'd crafted life on it. Something something worth pointing out. Next up, Chains the Bind. Uh, this is a cheap way to get six links, and I uh, ended up selling this card for 3C. Agony Coil, this uh, diamond ring just here, I thought was a nice example of uh, the sort of jewelry that, you know, people ask, like, I never, I never, I'm never able to sell any jewelry. What sort of jewelry actually sells, like, a couple of C or a few C? Well, this is one uh, example of one that sells for three cows. We have uh, life, a decent life roll, and once you mastercraft some resist on it and keep an eye out for that, uh, we ended up with, you know, over 40% 40, 40 total resistances, which early in the league, that's totally sellable. And uh, crit chance implicits are particularly popular in the softcore variants of the leagues as well. Next up, we have an amulet here as an ex another example of that kind of thing. Uh, this one sold for 5 chaos. This, is, uh, this was a decent ES early game kind of amulet. 37 energy shield, pretty good total resistances and crit chance. Also strength being somewhat useful for some builds that are getting those sorts of things. Top right side of the tree needs some strength to support their gems and so on. You know, get their things like increased duration and stuff going. Um, now I mastercrafted life on this. Now, not sure how much this factored into the uh, actually getting the sale here, but I find that mastercrafting life on things like this can help them show up in search results. 29 life is pretty low, but uh, some people just put life in without entering an amount, and I think that helps it show up in the search results. So it's something that can be removed and replaced with a better mastercraft in the future anyway, but I ended up getting 5C for that. So even if I ate into like less a bit less than half a C profit of that, it's whatever. 
Next up, a wand here that's sold for five chaos. Uh, we have a spell damage cast speed wand with added lightning damage to spells. Now I chose to mastercraft fire damage onto this because the vast majority of people leveling spellcasters are playing fire damage, and uh, early league fire is fire is just the most popular el element overall. Even people who are playing cold builds are doing cold to fire. So mastercrafting fire percent on there increases the total value of that because we're t looking at like eighty percent spell damage here. And once you put fire on that, what happens is that shows up in search results like this one over here where people add people put this stat in fire spell damage this is a combined mod here that includes spell damage elemental damage and fire damage so a lot of people search for this because you know if you're playing flame blast or firestorm or something like that that's what you want to show up so just adding 12 percent increased fire damage there makes that show up under searches for 90 percent fire damage so that's what that showed up for uh, and this ended up selling for 5c because in addition to 90 percent fire damage and 10 percent car speed which is a pretty good number to hit um, 7 to 90 added lightning damage to spells is actually quite high, so that adds a fair amount of damage. Pretty nice wand, 5c. Uh, next up was a very interesting dagger that I found that I checked the fizz DPS, a bit low, not really worth much, like 1 to 2c. Check the elemental DPS, not really worth much, a bit low, 1 to 2c. But I, I was like, uh, it's... It's kind of nice at this point in the league. I'll throw it up for 7C and see what happened. I actually got a lot of offers for uh, lesser amounts, like 4 to 5C, and uh, eventually took an offer for 6 Chaos. And uh, then shortly afterwards, before the trades updated, I ended up getting offered 7 Chaos for someone else. So this would have actually sold for 7 Chaos, and maybe if I'd been more patient, I could have even got like 8 Chaos or something for it. But it could have sold for 7 Chaos. Really weird one. Really weird one. I mean, it's just, I guess, the, to the total DPS on this was good when you add in the lightning and physical. And I guess someone who was doing like some sort of fizz to lightning setup would end up with good total DPS on this. Like that's all I can imagine. But I mean, it's got it's got leech and it's got like high total DPS, but just not very good fizz or elemental damage individually, which is usually what people are looking for. So this one puzzled me a little bit. Let me know if you have any uh, any thoughts on why this dagger ended up selling for six chaos and almost seven. This was a helmet that I bought uh, for 4 Chaos. Uh, so thing that I did very early in the league, the start of day two, when people would start getting to Merciless Lab and Uber Lab, I set up a helmet search, if I can find it here, just simply with Flame Blast Radius and Flame Blast Damage. And again, setting up that live search to, to notify us. So uh, looking out for any of those guys, and whenever I saw one that got listed up for 4 Chaos with Life and Resist, and I was like, Hell yes, all over that. This is something I can upgrade out of later, and probably something that I, could, that I could even resell. It's on an armor base, which is probably why the guy listed it for four chaos, because he's like, oh, flame blast on armor. But I mean, the type of builds that play flame blast go witch and templar, and like, <laughs> strength is not a problem, and bonus armor is like even even not necessarily a bad thing. So uh, yeah, that ended up I ended up picking that one up for um for the four uh, C, and that's the one I'm now wearing. So. Uh, a good investment in my character, which will pay off in dividends because that Flame Blast Radius is pretty nice. Next example was an item that I invested in. So since I'm playing a Fire Spellcaster, I'm keeping an eye on uh, Fire Spellcaster Jewelry. So what I, I've set, set up a search for amulets with either cast speed or fire damage and uh, over 60 life and over 40 resistances, 40 or over resistances. And this one showed up, which is pretty much just on the line of that. And the guy listed for 1C, I ended up buying it for four fuses. Uh, three fuses, according to the title. I ended up buying this for three fuses, and I used this for a little while, and then I shortly later found a, another, a better deal, and uh, ended up selling it for four chaos. So something that I bought for less than one chaos ended up selling for four chaos. So a bit over three chaos profit right there. The example, that's a good example of um, the power of like watching things that get put up, and you know, keeping an eye on the market and being patient with your purchases rather than just. Uh, what most people do, like the major vast majority of people go to PoE Trade and they're like, I want an amulet now. And they go buy the cheapest amulet that's there now or like the best amulet that that's there now. However, if you buy an amulet over the process of seven hours during the course of your play time, having your live search up on PoE Trade, then you can often get far better deals. And then you can also take this idea of you're not just investing in your character and then throwing that away, like putting that in a stash tub or reselling it for less money or something, which can often happen if you just buy an amulet that's there at the same time. If you wait and buy something that's really cheap uh, and pretty good value, then you can potentially uh, buy it, use it for a couple hours or use it for a day and then replace it with a better item, 
using the same process and then end up selling it for a profit. So not only did I get to use a good amulet on my character, I rented an amulet that I ended up making money from. So <laughs> that was uh, that was obviously a, a solid investment and a tidy three chaos profit. Just a unique drop, Morawi Erki, six chaos. Uh, this was an example of a one chaos ring that is not particular. Well, what is what happened with this one? Might have been worth more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no. This is, I was like, why did I pull this example out? This looks like it would be worth worth more than one chaos, and uh, that's exactly why I took a photo of this. I I picked this up and I chucked it in my one chaos tab. I looked at it, I like thirty life, and I was like, eh, okay. And then um, yeah, and then I ended up only selling up for one chaos. And then afterwards, I was like, because I that I think that sold instantly, right? Like I put that in my tab and I got a message straight away, and I was like, okay, I'll sell it to the guy. Um, but I think this might have been worth several chaos, um, if not more if I had waited until I leveled up my master and master crafted something on it. 30 life is low, but uh, again, you have to think about the league you're in. Softcore league, people are okay to accept 20, 30 life less if, uh, you know, if it's got the resists they need, if it's got damage stats on it. 270 accuracy on a ring is pretty good, and this does have good total resistance. Uh, that's 45, 40, that's like 90 resists right there. So um, pretty, well, plus the implicit, so we're looking at over 100% resistances here. My god, why did I sell this for one chaos? <laughs> an example of a mistake for you guys. So keep an eye out for that. Like over 100% resistances, yeah, that was probably worth like by itself three chaos. But uh, then with the life and accuracy and potential to roll something like uh, added flat physical damage or added flat lightning damage, uh, yes. Okay, that was worth way more than one C. Well, there you go, lessons learned. Uh, Primordial Might, this is an example of uh, taking, well, this, this this is an example of making profits from uh, hype, hyped builds, and uh, it's also an example of Ziggy D being a, a terrible, terrible scammer. <laughs> because obviously I made the uh, Golemancer build prior to release, um, and I totally knew that sometime during this league Primordial Might would drop for me, and that as a result I'd make fat stacks of currency. I totally knew that it was all planned. So uh, investing, becoming a, uh, a YouTuber who, that people watch your videos, a good number of people watch your videos, uh, and you can potentially influence markets. Um, it's a good idea to make videos on things that you know you're gonna get drops for in that league, because then you can get sick. I'm just obviously being facetious. <laughs> I just got lucky and got a Primordial Might, and they happen to be very expensive at the moment. So I made 32C for that. Uh, in selling this, actually, like practical information, I knew that the prices on these were gonna go down over time. Uh, because there's only going to be so many people who can who are going to play a, a summoner build and uh, there's high demand early on the people need them for the vendor recipe to make the prismatic jewel um, 32c I just sold it for the minimum I sold it for under I undercut someone who was listed right basically so I went for the quick sale and you know I could have made maybe a couple C more but I went for the quick sale to protect me from um, protect me from like the market dropping rapidly which could happen uh, an example of why you should be doing your prophecies. Prophecies uh, can be very valuable. Uh, Pleasure and Pain just here is the upgraded for uh, Crown of Thorns. Now early in the league it's very difficult to get like 300 energy shield helmets and the upgraded Crown of Thorns just has a massive amount of energy shield on it, something like 300 something I think. And uh, some uh, someone offered me to buy that prophecy when I got it and uh, they or me didn't realize the value of it. But I went and price checked the the value of the of the upgraded crown of thorns and also the prophecy, and it turned out it was actually worth like twenty C. So I ended up uh, putting it up for like eighteen or nineteen C, and uh, got a sale in mixed currency here. Uh, also, Vars summon skeletons for some reason. <laughs> because of memes. <laughs> so uh, prophecies can be very valuable. I also sold a, on a side note, uh, I sold one for Atsiri farming. There's a prophecy that gives you um, vaults of Atsiri when you kill Atsiri. I ended up selling that for 6C or maybe that's still up, I'm not sure. Uh, this one is another example of that same amulet process that I talked about. So this one I saw listed for four chaos and I saw 78 life. I saw uh, very high total resistances cast speed and rarity and mana and I'm like oh my god this is a juicy amulet so I ended up buying this and I'm not actually wearing this anymore because I found an amulet that was slightly better for me even though it was a worse amulet so I opted for the slightly worse amulet that was better for me this one here I lost the rarity which was a shame but um and then I ended up selling this one for 10 chaos so I used this one for a couple hours and then I got another amulet um, I think I got this as a drop or something uh, and then I ended up selling it for 10C. I knew that 4C right there, that was a great bargain. 
uh, I was like, this is going to be probably an amulet I'm going to stick with for quite some time. Happened to end up replacing it and making 6C profit. So uh, very nice stuff just there. And uh, it's also, again, just another example of having that search going for, uh, for items that you're looking for your build so that you can use for a while and potentially resell. Now this was an interesting one, my Witchfire investment strategy. Someone pointed out to me that Witchfires were up for 10C, and I thought, wait a minute, 10C? Witchfires are gonna be used by everyone who's playing Assassin Blade Flurry, and uh, that's everyone. Also, there's two new degen channeled skills that people are gonna be trying. What? What? So I bought Witchfire Brew for 10 cows. I bought a Witchfire Brew for 10 cows. I probably should have brought several, um, but this was early in the day, so early in, early in day two, I bought one for 10C, and I, I knew it was going to go up, and it went up to 20C, and I sold I sold it for 20C, this is actually my listing just here, uh, I ended up selling that for 20 Chaos, so that's a tidy 10C profit, doubled my investment, very nice, it actually, they actually spiked to 35 Chaos, <laughs> so I jumped off a little too early, on that, but uh, they actually spiked up to 35 Chaos briefly, but weird, weirdly guys, very weirdly, Shortly after, 20, 20C again, they went back to 20C. I don't know what this 14C is listing is here. I'm probably gonna buy this if this guy's available. Um, oh, I've got D&D &D on. I'm gonna buy that for 14C. Um, yeah, they went back down to 20C. So they spiked to 35 and they went back down to 25, 20. So uh, that, was, that was interesting. But um, I think they're probably gonna keep, maybe they might keep going up. Um, 20C even seems quite cheap because just because the amount of demand that's going to be for them. So, uh, well, I got some sales, guys. Hopefully, you found this uh, first episode of Ziggy Trades interesting, enlightening. Made some good cash. Hopefully, you guys get some insight into the cash making process so you can get some fat loots and gear for your character and, uh, you know, achieve the builds that you want to achieve that you might have felt would be a bit out of reach without trading before. So, uh, that is going to be it for now. I'm Ziggy D. And, guys, thank you very much for watching. The Witchfire Brew sold, guys. Missed out. Someone else got it. <laughs>